Hi guys, my name is Girish Pally, the host for Back to Basics, another Back to Basics, another week. Hope you're enjoying all the episodes so far because you know what? I am and I'm sure everyone else is, but I hope you are too. So today's episode we are talking about is entrepreneurship. We're talking about business consulting and we're talking about what it takes to be a entrepreneur. Maybe we need a lot of capital. Maybe we don't. We'll get into the episode today and figure that out by talking to this person. I've talked to him many times and now we're just close friends and here we are. We have an episode with him and it's great. And he has a podcast too. We're going to talk about that too. So Rushab, how are you? And thanks for coming on Back to Basics. I'm doing very well. And uh, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, so before we get into all the basics of entrepreneurship and business consulting and all the other stuff that you're going to be talking about, um, what does back to basic mean to you? Uh, well, well, for, for me, me, it basically means to simplify things in life, which I think a lot of us overcomplicate anything we do. Yeah. Um, and I will definitely touch on this on a lot of what I offer um, in the world of entrepreneurship, but it's, it's that same concept. It's to simplify and organize a thought process um, so that we can actually take action without getting lost in it. And so when I think about coming back to basics, it's really just coming back to the foundation, the foundational level. So, um, you know, I think it's a spot on uh, title for what you're doing here. Yeah. Thank you so much, by the way. And uh, thank you again for coming again to my show. And, and we talked about the for months and months and, and today had to be the day. So thank you again for coming. So is entrepreneurship really that hard to become an entrepreneurship? Does that make sense? What I'm saying, a kind of twisted question, but what are your thoughts on that? So I'll start it off with this way. It does take a certain cut of the cloth to be an entrepreneur. Um, you need to have a certain mindset, a certain um, risk appetite, um, and a certain willingness to do the work that's required to be an entrepreneur. It's as hard as you make it for yourself. Um, coming back to your first question, which was, you know, bringing things back to basics, I think sometimes people enter entrepreneurship and overcomplicate the process and then that will obviously lead to difficulty mm -hmm. but i will tell you the biggest thing i will say about entrepreneurship is you know you'll hear you'll hear you know other entrepreneurs say you need grit and you need um determination and you need motivation and confidence and but you know the reality is you need all of those things for anything not just entrepreneurship mm -hmm. but in entrepreneurship what you really do need to is to love or or be able to like the lifestyle because there is a lifestyle to entrepreneurship mm -hmm. and um when you're talking about doing everything on your own in the beginning and you're putting this risk out there um and then you're working long hours and you're working morning till night and you can put two months of blood sweat and tears and you fail can you get back up and go at it again? Hmm. Right. And hmm. so you have to learn to love the lifestyle or have to love the lifestyle. Yeah. Thank you so much. So, you know, there was a question that I, I saw today and it made me think a little. Um, what, there are three parts to this. One is employment, self-employed and entrepreneurship. Now, we know what employed is, you know, working for any company, getting your 401k, working nine to five job, or depending on the shift that you're in. Okay. But what is the difference between self-employed and entrepreneurship? I think it's just one of those nuanced semantics <laughs> Okay. <laughs> where, you know, I, 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 on my own podcast, I had a solopreneur on and I asked him, what's the difference between solopreneurship and entrepreneurship? Mm -hmm. And his answer was the same as what I just said, which is, it's just how you choose to define it. Solopreneur, one person business, at the end of the day, they're all under the entrepreneur umbre umbrella. Um, you know, I, I, I've seen when you're filling out some government application or something like that, and you have the option of choosing, you know, your employer, you can choose sometimes self-employed, right? 
which is what I would tick off the box because there's no box that says entrepreneurship. Right. So um, I'm self-employed, but I'm an entrepreneur as well. And so I, I don't really have uh, this wise differentiator on what the, the, the difference of the names. I think it's just semantics. Yeah, yeah. It's and again, like, if we're talking about not overcomplicating, that's overcomplicated. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I mean, the way the way I look at it is and what I grew up with, and I'm pretty sure you did too. In olden times, we used to say businessman, mm -hmm. and today we say entrepreneurship. It's pretty much the same thing. And I try to seriously dissect the words, but it's pretty much the same thing, no matter what you do and what you say, right? Yeah, uh, so, right. yeah, thank you so much for that. Now, becoming an entrepreneur, entrepreneur uh, there is a lifestyle change that you need to have, for sure, okay? Because instead of a 9-to-5 job, that's a 12-to-12 job, pretty much all day, every day. Nine, uh, seven times, uh, uh, seven days a week. Now, the the question that I have is, do you need a vision to be a entrepreneur, or do you need capital plus? So, what are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, vision is again. You know, we can get into semantics, but what I would say is every every entrepreneur needs to have an idea, right? You know, and it's, it's not, not to say, say that this idea has to be unique and that no one else has ever thought of it, uh, but essentially a, an idea and a business idea. And that idea needs to be fleshed out. Mm -hmm. It does not mean that you overanalyze on the idea either, right? There's a fine balance of going on analysis paralysis um, and jumping the gun and not even seeing if there's a market for, for, your, for this idea. Mm -hmm. um, and I think once uh, an entrepreneur goes through this process of, validating the idea, ensuring that there are, there's a market out for it. Mm -hmm. um, then, you know, the discussion on capital can come into play. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, I'm very well aware that there are some very, very successful businesses. I'm talking about billion dollar businesses out today that were not market fleshed out, right? But it was just started and it just took off. But the statistics on that is a lot lower. So when I give this answer, I'm talking, I'm leaning towards where the statistics would help any ambitious entrepreneur. The, 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 the one thing that I've seen, and I, we've all faced it as entrepreneurs, is that many times when we first start off, we think our idea is the best idea because we're so biased to it, because it is our idea. Sure. And so if, if we can take, a, take ourselves away from that thought process and say to ourselves, okay, listen, we may love this idea, but will someone else love this idea? Hmm. Will someone else want to buy this idea? Will someone else pay for this? And you may not have a buyer the first time around. It doesn't mean you give up on it. It means maybe you tinker on it. Maybe you refine it. Maybe, you know, there's, there's something that you have to do. Now, on the topic of capital, it's a really great question. I will always tell you that you should have money disposable in disposable, uh, maybe whether it's disposable income or just disposable funds to put towards a venture. Right. If you're starting off, I highly, highly um, advise against starting with no capital at all. It's not to say you cannot do it. It's not to say that it's um, that that you know others have not tried and 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 have succeeded or not succeeded. It's to say basically that if you have money to you put towards it, you're going to be in a better position and you're going to enjoy the process. You're going to enjoy entrepreneurship. And a lot of people will start without money. They will then find themselves in a bind and they will then not enjoy the process, be stressed, be overwhelmed. And when that mindset and, and uh, feelings start happening, then the entire business, the product, everything starts suffering. So when it comes to capital, yes, I am a believer that you should have some money to throw towards it. Something that just lets you... Um, build whatever this idea is that you have yeah thank you so much for that because there's a lot of people they say that yes capital is definitely an issue that i don't want to start uh, but there are certain businesses that they start from complete zero or maybe limited funds to start something um so it's, yeah it's but, exactly for the reason why i uh, started off by saying validate the idea make sure there's a market for it because that process, the only thing you're spending is time. You're not spending money. 
not to say time is not valuable. I think time is more valuable than money. But at, in this scenario, you know, time is not putting food on your table, right? Money does. So if you if you're starting off, you know, validate, flesh out the idea, make sure there's a market out for it, make sure there's customers for it, and start off with a small proof of concept. See, you know, that will at least bring some small income in. And um, you know, if you're starting something that doesn't require funds and it just requires your knowledge and maybe the tools you have at your disposal, maybe a computer, a podcast mic, a microphone, whatever it might be, right? And you're just maybe selling your 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 knowledge, your experience, uh, essentially an educational element to it. Then yeah, go ahead. The the cost would be completely marginal. Um, and you have to worry, but if you're looking at building something that requires a manufacturing process and a distribution and supply chain, and then you're, you're going to have to ensure that you have all that, all those ducks in a row. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, by the way. So before we get into your history and, and who you are and what you do, uh, one last question, if you don't mind. So on entrepreneurship, there's two types of questions, success and failure. Now, what are, what are your definitions when, when you hear these two words? Do you say failure or do you say step back? I actually say lessons, lessons learned. Okay. All right. If you're going to, if you're in it, if you're in entrepreneurship for the long run, something that you enjoy doing, something that you know, this is um, what you want to do for the rest of your life, then failure is inevitable. And you have to welcome failure. Now, failure has these degrees, right? Is the entire business failed or is a specific initiative within, you know, your venture that failed, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, when I say failure is in inevitable, whatever those uh, hard hardships are, take them as lessons mm -hmm. because that's the only way you're going to be able to refine. What did not work and what can I do to change it? Now, success, again, is relative. You'll have some people that will look at success as if, They've earned a certain a number of revenue, a certain, you know, there's a, a, a target revenue um, and uh, or their business was successfully acquired. Right. So that's a success for them. Or it went IPO. Um, and some people just say, hey, my business makes money. Um, more I, I have more revenue than my expenses and I'm able to make a living off it. And I love what I'm doing. And that's and they're happy. And that's success. So it, it comes down to that full circle. It's very relative of how you look at success and failure. But I think it's a great question. I'm a big believer that because I've succeeded and I have failed if we want to stick with that word. Uh, but I have taken huge lessons from from all those experiences and put it towards all my ventures. And it doesn't mean that just because I succeeded in something last time. It doesn't guarantee I'm going to succeed on it next time. That's the other thing about entrepreneurship. Sure. Because there's a lot of factors outside of what we do also that can impact us. If I started a restaurant in 2015, just an example, and I was mild, wildly successful and I sold off the restaurant. And now I launch, I start a whole new restaurant, get a loan from a bank and um, put all the capital towards getting it ready to go, hire my staff and everything. And I do a grand opening. Yeah. And the grand opening is March of 2020. <laughs> and all of a sudden, two weeks later, the world shuts down because of the pandemic. That's right. Right? I could have been successful in 2015 with that restaurant, but this time around, I'm going to have a lot more challenges and struggle, and the likelihood of me failing is much higher. So it is It is another another takeaway for anybody that's ambitious in entrepreneurship that sometimes it's luck and factors that, that are out of your control. But uh, Russia, before we get into the other topic... It, when you, let's say, start with that example, with that same example that you have, don't you think we need to have a little backbone, you know, uh, capital? Because just in case, if there is certain situations, you know, back in the time when we used to, when we had 9-11, it was shut down for many days, like many, many days. I, I would say months. Okay, so there was disaster there, too. So I, I, yeah, I absolutely agree. You should have capital. I mean, that from your question, when you asked that before, that was, I did, you know, uh, state that, that I think every entrepreneur should have capital when they start. Yeah. Now the type of business that is going to be dependent, uh, the, the amount of capital required is going to be dependent on that type of That's business. Right. Hospitality restaurants from my own experience. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about, you need, um, 
probably six months of runway, you know, not thinking of the pandemic, six to nine months. And what that means is if not one person enters your restaurant and eats your food, you should be able to keep the doors open with your staff, paying their salaries and paying all the expenses that come with it for six to nine months in, in that business. And I've seen time and time again that restaurants that have launched mom and pop restaurants, taken a loan from the bank, and none of it goes towards working capital. It only goes towards the preparation and setup of the restaurant and the renovations and the hiring and then so in inventory. And all of a sudden, they may have maybe 30 days of runway. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the other thing I will say, Girish, is that when capital is there and you're starting a business, I cannot stress how important marketing is. And a lot of people do not, a lot of entrepreneurs do not put money towards marketing. Mm. Um, and you know why? It's, it's a mindset of, I have this money in the bank and I don't want to waste it. Sure. And that mindset is what actually handicaps a lot of entrepreneurs from succeeding. Because mm -hmm. think about it. You have money in the bank that you can use to grow your business, but instead of thinking of growth and bringing in new customers, you have entrepreneurs that are thinking of, wait, wait, this will pay my bills this month sure, or, or end next month. Mm -hmm. And, and so they're now looking at, let me hold on to this without that long-term plan of getting revenue coming in so that it could pay for the next month's bills and the third month's bills and the fourth month bills. So, um, you know, but that's, again, I can keep, going on more and more layers sure, of entrepreneurship, sure, but yet sure. to answer your question, yes, they have to have a backbone of capital in that example so that they can sustain. But how long did, did you know, it took almost nine months for many restaurants to open up. Um, and then again, a second wave came and then the vaccines didn't come to earlier this year. And so, you know, I think many restaurants were struggling for about a year and then they had to take a partnership with the Grubhubs and the Uber Eats of the world who are th taking 30% of their, of their, of the uh, margins. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, any restaurant that's out there that has survived this long, they are doing something right. <laughs> of course. Of <laughs> any course. small mom and pop restaurant. Yeah. Thank you so much, by the way, Russia, for that. So tell me about yourself. Who, who are you? Uh, because you know, the, the definition of who you are, is eight times entrepreneur, then you're a business consulting, and then you're doing some education stuff and the workshop stuff. So explain, where do you yeah. have time to sleep, first of all? <laughs> uh, well, I do sleep. Uh, and um, it's, you know, I've had that question asked to me. Uh, it is through experience that I've learned how to manage the time to do the things that I do. Sure. Um, and I, I'm happy to, to, to jump into that. But you know, you kind of touched on that. You know, I do identify myself as an entrepreneur. Who am I? I'm a I'm an I'm an eight X entrepreneur. Eight companies. Um, these companies have spanned over ten industries. And you know, to keep it very high level and not to go on a on a long ramble, which I know many people tend to do when they're talking about themselves. Um, I I started my entrepreneurial journey entering the family business. And I became a co-owner in the family business. And this was a very unique business. It was in the metal commodity business and the maritime business. It was buying large ships like oil tankers and cargo vessels that were old. And we would bring them to the South Asian subcontinent, predominantly India, where they were recycled for their metal. They were essentially demolished. So you can imagine it was an international business. We had offices in multiple countries and uh, negotiating with a lot of owners and founders of their companies, a lot of C-level exposure, uh, very capital intensive business. There's capital raises, there's, um, uh, you know, working with banks and with letters of credit. So, you know, understand the entire banking system at the same time, but there's a supply chain game because these assets, which is what they, these ships were, are metal commodities. And you, depending on the time of the year, transporting them from one side to the other part of the world, you have to look at what routes, um, what the weather is going to be like, uh, where the piracy is the most at this point, what are the fuel prices, you know? And so there's entire logistics behind that. So it was my first exposure at a very young age to learning everything from capital raises to contract negotiation to managing, um, you know, over 50 to hundred, uh, individuals, um, as well as then doing the supply chain and distribution of taking an asset from one side to the other, and also doing market analysis to ensure that the, the, the market prices sustain so that we're not losing money. And so um, we, at the same time, the, in the family business, we had a pharmaceutical company as well, strictly on the business side of things. Uh, we were doing what they call contract manufacturing. 
Um, and then from there, I had got, I left the family businesses and, and, and when the global market, the 2008 global market uh, crash happened and I entered the, my, an, an MBA program. And I was thinking to myself, maybe I should enter, um, corporate America. Uh, lo, lo and behold, after two years of doing my MBA, I did interview a lot of big name companies like McKinsey and Oliver Wyman and Deloitte and Alex Partners, but I ended up creating my own consulting practice. And um, while I opened my consulting practice, I also opened up a speaking arm where I created a framework that can help any anybody think business and talk business in a very structured way. So to your point of back to basics, um, it's really getting people to look at the most foundational way of looking at business, a 30,000 foot view that if you look down, you can see, you can, you can dissect business on a one page. And so that was my speaking arm. Um, I also did a tech startup. Um, I got into a hospitality venture, a real estate venture, exited all those. And uh, then, you know, grew, uh, went back into my consulting and my, um, uh, uh, speaking side, which was there consistently throughout those years, but then focused on it. And uh, just most recently, I launched an online business accelerator called the Entrepreneur 360 Academy that helps entrepreneurs um, take their business uh, to growth, scale, and profitability. And so that's uh, so I have now to, to, to date, my only business is my consulting, my speaking, and my online accelerator. And that's where I have now put all my focus in and my energy in. And I found tremendous joy and happiness in that. Um, and it's really taking 17 years of experience from trials and tribulations and putting it towards helping other entrepreneurs. I've done entrepreneurship over 10 different industries. So I'm very confident that I can help almost any entrepreneur, no matter what industry they're in. Cool. Thank you so much. Hopefully I'll, I'll get some guidance from you too at the same time. Thank you so much for that. It seems like 17 years is so much and you've done so much. And I think if I'm not mistaken, uh, your workshop is coming up soon also in uh, October. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. So um, I launched the Entrepreneur 360 Academy back in June. It was a five week program um, and um, I'm relaunching. So it, it's after five weeks, uh, take a little time, retool and relaunch again every few months. So I'm launching again. October 25th is right now the target date for the launch. Of course, if anybody's interested, um, you can go on my website, thinkbusiness360.com, and you'll be able to find information there about it. Uh, and um, yeah, and then I'll be launching again in the second week of January. Um, and I have another, and so this is what we call info products, right? Uh, educational products. It's really an ed tech um, industry, if you want to call it that, mm -hmm. education technology. Mm -hmm. um, and it's mainly because you're having people come online and they're going through this this program. These are pre-recorded video modules. In those five weeks, I uh, uh, each week a new module is dripped out to the customers. At the same time, each week I bring in experts on specific topics. And my first uh, launch, I had an expert talk about how to raise capital. I brought in an expert on digital ads. Um, I brought in a brand strategist to talk about branding. I brought in analytics uh, uh, consultant to talk about analytics strategy. So how business owners can actually use the numbers to work in their favor and how to, how to collect those numbers. And I had a burnout uh, specialist, someone that talks about how to manage those those stressful times in entrepreneurship and how to manage burnout. Um, and I, I'm going to do the same thing in the next launch. Um, and I do every week I was doing um, office hours. So any of my customers that are there, direct access to me. And so we can discuss what's going on in their business and try to figure it out. On the next launch, I'm actually throwing in a business coaching package as well, which is something new, but I realized that a lot of people wanted some one-on-one -on -one guidance and I can, I can afford to, to incorporate that in, uh, with the time I have. So I'm going to be throwing that in there. Um, and then next year I'm launching a second product. So this one's called Entrepreneur 360 Academy, really with established entrepreneurs. Next year I'm launching Startup 360 Academy. And, um, that's to help those that are starting a business. And I will throw one more if you don't mind here. Um, I am, uh, I partnered with a friend of mine who is, was a doctor that became an entrepreneur and, uh, successfully started a company and exited and had, had another company buy his company out. And so he has a huge network of, of physicians and medical professionals and doctors 
that um, have that have a desire to go into entrepreneurship, whether it's their own practice or to get out of medicine. And so we're we're creating a very similar academy, like we have Entrepreneur 360 Academy. We're creating what's called Doctorpreneur Academy, and it's for those those in the medical professional field, so that they can also go towards and learn how to become CEOs. Um, and, and that's, and we're creating a, a complete online program and a membership program for them as well. Yeah. Thank you so much, Roshav. It seems like you've done so much and you're still doing more and, and, so, and, you, <laughs> and you, you gave me three answers and you gave me six. So, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I apologize for that. Um, I try, I, I, I don't want to ramble too much about what I've done in my past, but I, I hope I was concise enough just to give the, the relevant information. Of course, out of course, definitely. I have been to uh, one of your classes back in June. So it was, uh, it was a great it, insight. It was a webinar, a, yeah. It was a webinar. It was a great uh, uh, workshop for me. I mean, that's a workshop for me, but yeah. it, it was great. Definitely. Definitely. It's so worth it to go there. Appreciate uh, it. Thank you. Yeah. So Russia, now you've done all this and you got a partnership. And you're doing more stuff even on top of that, I'm pretty sure, because I think you did tell me that later uh, offline, which I'm not going to mention here. But <laughs> what are you going to do for the next five more years? It seems like you've already done enough or a lot. Yeah, I, no, no, this, this is this is, is what I'm going to be all in. Right. And I, I think in this edu. So there's for anybody that's in, interested in entrepreneurship that's listening to this. If, if anybody's interested in starting something, there are three industries that are completely skyrocketing right now. That is the fintech industry, which is financial technology. There's health tech, which is, you know, health technology, you know, specifically because of the pandemic. And there's ed tech, which is education technology, which is the industry that I'm in right now. Those are the three uh, growing industries that have a lot of, uh, of, of upward traction. And so, you know, I have started companies. I have exited companies. I have raised capital. I've been in front of VCs. Um, I've had companies fail. <laughs> I've, I've had bad partnerships. Um, I, I've seen a lot of it. I've got, I've, I've taken large loans from banks and I've repaid large loans to banks. And, you know, I've done uh, a, a lot of international travel and I've had, you know, physical office locations in different areas. And, you know, I've done all this stuff that you come to a point where that, that hunger to continuously start something and then, you know, take it through its circle and cycle. Um, you know, I'm, I'm almost 40. I have two young kids, uh, that I love spending time with. And, um, so to me, I want to now take, as you mentioned, the amount of stuff I've done, which is a breadth of things I've done. Um, and I want to use that towards helping other entrepreneurs because I've seen all of it. And the, you know, the, the other thing that maybe I mentioned to you offline and I don't remember what it was, but What's, in, what's great about this this world that I'm going towards is it's opening doors for investment opportunities mm -hmm. and advisement opportunities. So I can actually sit on boards and I can invest in companies that I feel are are legitimate all by going through my own process and saying, you know what, I'm going to take my business 360 framework that I created. I'm going to analyze this company. I'm going to see if it's worth investing in. And if it is, here we go. And, you know, I want to be smart now in these, these, you know, this second, I would say my second third of my business career, right? My first third is done. This is my second third. And then we have our, you know, the grand finale, which will be later in life. But <laughs> um, yeah, so this is what I'm focusing on. Yeah, I, ho I hope the, the season finale or whatever you want to call it uh, is going to be a, a bash uh, with success and no failures and no le lessons uh, because you have already learned enough lessons already. Uh, so yeah, Russia, thank you so much for coming on my show. Do you have any last words before you uh, leave from uh, the show? Absolutely. Um, you know, there's a difference of being an entrepreneur and being a wantrepreneur, but it doesn't mean that if you find yourself in the entrepreneur category, you cannot be an entrepreneur. Um, it really comes down to shift the mindset and changing how we think. Uh, one of the best advice is that, um, I, ha I give to almost anybody I come across is, you know, compete with yourself, help everyone else. Mm. So have that competitive spirit within you. And if you want to succeed and get to certain goals that you put out, uh, out there, you know, make sure you're, you're, you're having that competitive uh, competition within yourself. Mm. But as you help others, you're going to find reciproc them reciprocating it back towards you. Mm. And that, that ability of having others then realize that you, you help them and they're helping you is what makes 
entrepreneurship a lot better these days. Gone are the days of of competing with other companies and going neck and neck and being cutthroat. Today, entrepreneurship is all about empathy and working with others and alliances and partners because every there's enough there's what people have learned realize is that there's a lot of pieces a lot of there's enough pieces of the pie for everyone. Sure. And so that would be my my uh, takeaway. You know, compete with yourself, help everyone else. Yeah. Thank you so much, Russia, for for that and uh, for being here on Back to Basics. We've tried and tried and tried and. We have finally made it. And thank you again for uh, coming on my show. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Girish. Uh, it was a pleasure. And, uh, you know, I, I want to congratulate you on your continued success. I know you you started this roughly a year ago and you have done phenomenal from all the marketing I've seen you put out there and just, you know, talking to you. So I commend you on that. I commend you staying consistent on this. And, you know, frankly, that's actually one, one last thing I can tell entrepreneurs, consistency. You want to succeed? Consistency, consistency, consistency. In entrepreneurship, though those that succeed, it's two things. One, they're consistent. And two, they do the things that no one else wants to do. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much for that. Appreciate it. Yep. Talk to you soon, Gersh. So guys, we spoke with Rush up today and we talked about the entrepreneurship, the wantrepreneurship, the solopreneurship, the businessman. What else is there? There were other words too, but I can't remember. But there's one thing that what he did say is that follow your passion and just be consistent and put your mind to it, whatever that mind is. It could be good, bad, ugly, either way, whatever it is, just focus on the good stuff, which is focus on business, focus on your happiness. That's what it is. That's all that matters. And what we also said is success, failures, those are just words. But there's only one word that we did learn is lessons, right? Because there's no failures. There's only success. So guys, as usual, as always, there is a quote from the day from Back to Basics. And the quote of the day is success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. Isn't that what he said? But he said that in a different way. But I think that's what he meant. But guys, as usual, as always, remember, everything in life goes back to basics and that's what we did today guys just keep on commenting good bad ugly either way it'll make my show stronger day by day week by week but there's one thing well there's three things one the guest is going to be awesome the content is going to be amazing and of course the host is the bomb so guys take care god bless and i'll see you next week next week's episode on back to basics please uh, come and watch and if you don't want to listen here but I rather you do both how about that and just give us feedbacks if you uh, like this interview and we'll keep on giving you more uh, interviews like this on uh, back to basic uh, club and back to basic rooms uh, so thank you for that so nikit your next question is do you think the leadership nowadays or leadership ever did they ever think the three c's and the three c's are the critical thinking the creativity the communication and the collaboration Do you it think was talked your... about. I'm sorry. It was it was talked about. It was not practiced.